Good morning, everyone. How's it going? I hope you're hanging in there, this rain. It's been intense. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's, <laughs> it's been a bit dreary. And I think everyone's feeling it a little. Um, I'm just getting my palette set up here while we wait for some people to, some more people to join. Um, anyone have any interesting stories to tell? Um, let's see. Our garden is doing all right. It's tiny. It's like three feet by three feet big, I think, something like that. We only have about 10 plants in it. Um, they're doing okay. They're hanging in there. Um, we have had a cat coming in and like, you know, doing its business in there. So I tried like spraying some citrus spray. Apparently they, they don't like that. Um, it seems to have stopped, but that could be because um, the plants are getting bigger. I really don't know. But the garden's doing okay. If any of you are out there with the garden, how is your garden doing? Okay. So, good morning. Welcome to my studio today. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, we are going to play around today with color mixing. We're going to explore the complementary set of blue and orange. Now, one of my earlier videos that I've done in this series, um, we did yellows and purples and which is also a complimentary set. So I thought for this video, we will do blue and orange. Hey, Joanne, good morning. So this might be a review for some of you, but I think it's always good to try, you know, to, to review things, go back to the basics. Hey, Jamie, we're going to do a couple of um, different little studies, exercises, and one of them is a little bit challenging that I've never tried before. So we'll see. So hopefully this will be good for those of you that aren't used to painting and those of you who have a lot of experience, maybe you'll get a um, challenge out of this as well. So just to go over again, um, what complementary colors are. Um, this is my little color wheel <laughs> I made. Um, blue, yellow, and red are primary colors. When you mix these together, you get orange, you get violet, and you get green. Colors that come across from each other on the color wheel are what are called complementary colors. So um, violet and yellow are complementary. Blue and orange, which we're going to do today, are complementary, and green and red are complementary. Um, I did a plein air landscape painting video a while back also, and green and red, we explored green and red in the landscape. Um, so today we're going to do orange and blue. So just to start off, um, Complementary colors are important because when they're in their most saturated states, they uh, really intensify each other and they, that can add a lot of drama um, to a picture, a logo, um, team, like school colors are often blue and orange. Hey, Connie. Um, 
I've got two objects here I might use today um, of saturated blue and orange. Um, so when they're in their most saturated state, they really um, uh, create a very dramatic effect. So this is a good combination here um, to think about for that. Now, when you start mixing them together, however, with, with painting, they start to neutralize each other. Um, and this is really good to know if you're painting a landscape or something like that. Now, I have included, um, and I will include the link right now for you, I have a link to a landscape um, where you can see this really dramatic effect with blues and oranges. And there's also a lot of neutral colors in there, especially in the, in the middle area there. Um, so we're going to start off today with some color mixing and color studies. And you might use this photograph just as like a little bit of a reference for yourself if you want to um, start playing with your colors and laying them out in some kind of format. So we'll just take some time doing that to start with. Um, for your palette, this is what I'm going to do today for my palette. So just to explain, I have my titanium white. Now I've put down cadmium yellow, medium hue, and I've put down cadmium red, medium hue. And then this is a pre-mixed orange. It's a manufactured orange, and I cannot remember. It has a name I can't. I don't know how to um, pronounce imidazolone uh, orange, but it's this orange and it's it's um, it's this color here, and you can see these two colors are very similar. Um, this cad this is more of like a yellow red. This is what would be considered a warm red. Um, alizarin crimson, which is a color I, I usually like to have people work with also. This is what's called a um, cool red. It's veering a little bit, hey Carolyn, it's veering a little bit closer to the violets and blues um, of a color wheel. So when you're mixing yellow and red together to get orange, if you want a really bright, punchy orange, using this warmer red is going to get you there a little bit easier. So if you have that, go ahead and use it. If you only have a lizard and crimson, that's fine. If you have both, you might want to experiment with both of them today. because so we're going to do some color mixing to get to orange. And then if you do have an orange, um, hey Lisa, if you do have an orange, um, mixed like in a tube, you can use that one as well. And I just want to review something um, some of you probably already know, but when you see hue on a label like that, that means it's a reproduction of the actual color. So this isn't cadmium yellow, it's cadmium yellow hue. It's actually a different pigment that is making it appear like a cadmium color. Cadmiums are really, um, they're a little more toxic and they're also um, expensive. So for example, um, I have this bottle of this tube of cadmium oil paint, orange, and it was on sale. The sale price is $19 which means it was probably around $25 for this tube of paint, um, which is a little bit pricey for oil paint. Um, so cadmiums are, like cadmiums in their pure pigment are more expensive and like I said, also a little more toxic. When you handle them, you probably wanna wear gloves. Um, I like to wear gloves when I'm using 
oil paints anyway, but especially cadmium paints. Um, so just a little info about that. Um, and then you'll want to use a blue. If you have a couple of different blues, you can try them. I'm going to use my phthalo blue today, um, but ultramarine would work as well. Um, up to you. So we're just going to start off, like I said, with a little color mixing basics. Um, and if you want to refer to that link I just sent in the chat uh, for a landscape um, to look at different neutrals, you can. But to start with, let's just play around with mixing. Um, and I know this probably will be a uh, review for some of you, but review is always good. So I'm going to mix in orange. I'm going to take some of my yellow. And since this is a lighter pigment, I'm only going to use a tiny bit of the red to start with because red is a, a darker, stronger color. Um, and mix those together. And that's going to be an orange. And you can see comparing it to the orange that I got in the tube. Um, it's pretty similar. I'm going to grab some from my tube now. Well, this is a much um, more opaque and stronger color. Um, this one's more transparent. And I'm going to try to get my palette here a little closer to you now. So it's nice to see how these compare. And if you have a color that you've bought in a tube, an orange, um, go ahead and yeah, compare how they uh, look next to each other. Um, you can also play around with taking your orange out of the tube and adding some red to it and making it more red. See what that does. There's a slight difference there. If you have your alizarin crimson out, you can use that to get red orange. Um, I'm going to use a little more yellow and I'm going to try to get what's called a yellow orange. It's really not that much different. I'm going to use some white also. But generally the darker value something is, um, the less paint you need to affect the lighter color. Um, so just play around with different oranges. Let, let's make this a little study in orange. Um, from here, you can also add some white. And if you want to just mix right on the paper, you can. You can see that. So Joseph Albers was a color theorist and he put forth the idea that all the way we see color is relative to the colors around it. So since I'm painting on white paper, the orange looks a certain way um, than it would appear if it was right next to a blue. So that's something we're going to think about today as we're working also, just how our colors appear different um, when compared to the colors um, surrounding it, when you change the colors surrounding it. So try mixing your paints into each other on your paper for your study and just explore like the full range of oranges, full range of oranges, whatever orange, um, if you have a pre-mixed or manufactured orange. So the darkest value for me that I can get is somewhere around there. 
<laughs> I should have taped this down. Go ahead. Since I have these two little pieces of paper in front of me, I'm going to go ahead now and work with my blue. Whatever blue you're dealing with today, blue is a primary color, so you can't mix two colors together to get to blue. So you have to have some kind of a blue from a tube. Um, like I said, I'm going to be working with phthalo blue today, uh, which is this really bright, punchy, Blue phthalos are used in a lot of turquoise colors. It's a really intense color. Um, the thing to know about it, though, is that it's um, you only need a little. A little goes a long way with phthalos. Um, so you might try mixing some white in there also. Now, I didn't clean my brush off all the way, so I had a little orange in there. So I'm going to take white right out of the tube, and I'm going to paint some of that down. And then while that's wet, I'm grabbing a touch, just a teeny tiny bit of this phthalo, and I'm going to mix it in and blend it on my can my canvas. And try to get like a gradation of sorts. So a lot of colors you'll notice if you use them right out of the tube, like phthalo is a good example, um, and you paint it down just on white, you'll see there's a lot of like striations in the brush stroke. Um, that indicates that this is what's called a transparent pigment. If you add a little bit of um, white to it, that makes it more opaque. So it's a really good challenge to try to add enough white to your blue to make it opaque, but still keep the dark value. I'm going to try to do that right now. I have a little bit going here. And you can see there's quite a difference in the paint when you add just a little bit of white to it, like I did at the very bottom here. There's just a tiny bit of white in that. And that makes it slightly more opaque. So that's why I always have people get titanium white when I'm teaching my classes, um, because I want because we use a lot of transparent pigments. So you can just play around with that a little bit more, um, mixing your white and blue, and just getting a feel for, you know, the darkest possible blue you can get. And then also these light values. Um, a lot of times people especially with blue because it's such a strong pigment. A lot of times people are unable to, to do these lighter values with it. So you want to play around with using a bunch of white and just a teeny tiny bit of blue. Probably even the blue that's in your paintbrush is enough um, to tint that. So since this is just a study, I'm not like getting too specific or anything. Um, I just want to see the range of colors that these um, pigments allow me right now. So 
So you can see how that tones the orange. It, it neutralizes it slightly. It makes it a little bit more gray. So a really good thing to try is to start with an orange. And I'll hold up my palette here. So that's going to be my orange. And then gradually add a little bit of blue to it. And you see it gets a little browner, a little grayer, a little less saturated. And maybe ending up with a dark blue. And you'll see it starts to get a little, because blue is so intense, it starts, you know, this is veering on the green here. Maybe add a little more red in there and just see um, all these wonderful neutral colors that you can get from mixing these together. So if you want a dark color, the darker your pigments are that you're mixing together, the darker your color is going to get. Hey Charlotte, good morning. So this is a nice range. Um, i add a little more blue and just try to get a dark, dark blue. But I notice a lot of times when people are first working with phthalo, and I think a lot of you are beyond this at this point, but a lot of times um, it's just everything's dark, 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 dark. And um, the challenge with phthalo or any kind of blue, even ultramarine, um, is to try to get these lighter tones as well. So, um, Start using your white and mixing it into your little color blob and see what kind of lighter um, neutral values you can get also. And so this would be a good time if you've been practicing, if you've spent the last 10 minutes playing around with your pigments, this is a good time to refer to that landscape that I sent. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up and maybe try to just do something small, even um, if you want to start on one of your pieces that you've already done um, and just try to get the different bands of um, intensity in that. And you don't have to necessarily make it exactly like the um, picture, but just like thinking about each of those layers of color. I'm thinking about this as like a color study. Um, trying to get that kind of neutral mauve color there, but then there's a brighter, more intense uh, orange. If you're painting on top of something, you're going to notice, like I'm painting on top of this blue, when this dries, it probably won't be as punchy. Um, it probably won't be as vibrant, but we'll see. Because what happens when the paint's dry is the color underneath it gets a little bit more. Um, you, you see the color underneath it because the paint dries a little more transparent. So to deal with that, um, you can try to mix some white into your paint. So that's what I'm doing here with this yellow. 
and I'm applying it a little bit thicker also. Let's see what else, there's some white here. If you wanna play with your brush strokes also, I always love using what's called broken color, which is when you don't mix your colors all the way and um, you see the striations in each brush stroke, something the Impressionist painters did a lot. But looking at this um, landscape that I sent you, try to get some of those really um, light, neutral kind of pink tones also in there. And again, you don't have to make it exactly like the picture, but just use it as reference and as a goal for yourself. So as we get closer to the top, I'm going to, it's veering a little into violet and that's blue and red. So I'm going to explore that also. And then I'm going to come back to the blue and white for the very top of this. Now, if you want to blend, like mine aren't very blended, but you could try using a little of your um, glazing fluid. And try just gradually blending that way. Landscape is your reference and just try to get some of the colors that you see in it. Play around with your paint, um, the direction of your paint. Now if you're like me, you've used up all your yellow. If you want to go back into it with your blue, you know, try mixing your blue and red together for a kind of dark mauve color. You could come into your water. I mean, you know, this is all, it can be as abstract as you want it to be. Um, but see what your darkest possibility is with just these colors. If you mix your blue and red, you should get a nice dark value like that. And I'm going to play around on my red, my orange stuff I did here. Um, you might try on your orange block, try taking some light blue. So white with a little bit of blue in it and see what it's like to paint on top of that with that light color. I love this combination so much. Um, something that's fun to try is a gradation going from light into gradually going a little darker. Oops, that wasn't gradual. Yeah, 
fun little exercise you can try today or another time um, is, you know, maybe write your name Earth. <laughs> and then fill in those letters gradually, like maybe start with your darkest possibility, your darkest option, and then go lighter. And then do the reverse surrounding it. So start with your darkest color on the outside, painting around the letters with the darkest value. And then gradually go lighter from there. And you'll find in the middle, your letters will blend together. But that's just a fun little thing to try doing um, to control your paint mixing, your values, um, and all that. So we'll just take a couple more minutes, finish up whatever train of thought you're on. Um, I know I'm going through this pretty fast, but we're going to get into a new fun um, exercise study after this. So you'll want a clean paper to work on. Oh, and by the way, if you want to play around, if you're a mixed media person, you want to play around with some paper, some orange and blue papers, um, applying them to your painting, um, feel free to do that. This paint is still wet, so I can just put that right in there. I'm also going to take some of my acrylic medium and apply this with that. So that has some blue in it, so it's toning it back a little. All right. I like that a lot. I think that's really pretty. This especially, the red, orange, and light blue combo. I love that. Okay, so new challenge. Um, you might want to go ahead, just clean off your palette a little bit, reload your paints. So you can either find um, a blue and a red I'm sorry, blue and an orange object to work from. Like I have this tape dispenser and this sponge. Um, you could do that or you could refer to, let me share a couple of images for you that I found. You could refer to these if you want. Um, here's a good one. To do these this big bowl of fruit. I think actually that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to work with the bowl of fruit drawing or photograph that I sent out. So I'm going to first take my pen, my blue pen. You can use a pencil, whatever you want to use. You can also make it abstract if you want. 
up to you. You can also make it abstract if you want, up to you. Um, and I am going to draw these mandarins. I'm going to really try to stick to it and use my orange marker for the bowl. I'll make up the side here. This is going to be really uh, <laughs> funky. But, okay, so this is going to be the bowl. And then I've got my mandarins behind it. And again, use the picture for reference. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so that should come up with that. So yeah, I'm gonna paint this orange, these different fruits using blue first, and I'm gonna paint the bowl orange. So it's opposite day. We're using the opposite colors. Ooh, I almost didn't do it. It's really <laughs> just a fun blue and white. Um, to just black these different values in. Also playing around with the how much water is in the paint. You might try different things that way. Let the white of your paper help you. Some of the highlights if you need to. I might go a little lighter here too. And I'm just trying to get the form of these oranges. I'm not necessarily trying to get all the little details in there right now. So this is where there's the darkest part. So I'm just going to take my blue right out of the tube um, and try to indicate that. Good. Yeah. So I can only go so dark. I might have to do a couple layers or like I said, try adding a touch of white to the blue to make it opaque, but still keep it dark. That helps a little. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that there and I'm going to move into the bowl. Yeah. 
Yeah, painting the opposite of something like this is a really good. <laughs> you, know, you could try it with anything, with the landscape. We might do it again in the future. Um, just painting some of these highlights I'm seeing in here. I'm also going to do a light orange. Actually, I'm a little bit of blue in that, but I'm just going to go with it. And I'm going to grab a big brush to do this. I'm going to do a big brush, lots of water, and just put that in real fast. This brush is So we'll just consider this to be the underpainting. And, you know, you can do a couple things from here. You could keep it this way. I kind of like it. <laughs> it's sort of fun. I don't like that. But if you want to also neutralize some of these colors now um, and start mixing colors together, your blues and your reds, so a really good place to start would be in the shadows, the darkest areas. I'm going to take my blue and my orange to get ugh, the darkest value I can. And I'm gonna start in my little shadow area here, just to like help me now. And I could continue with this blue thing or maybe start to paint my oranges orange and um, my bowl blue. But I think mixing that dark value to begin with is a good jumping off point. I am going to use this for the base here as well for some of those shadows. I know for this that the it gets cut off a little bit, but it's really cute. And then I'm going to do the same with the oranges, but since I'm working with a lighter value on top of that dark, I'm going to use some white. I'm going to um, really use a lot of white to get the paint to sit on top of that a little bit more. I'm going to But you'll notice, like, your oranges might turn green at first. You might need to let it the paint dry and then start applying those highlights on there a little bit more.
I really like painting wet into wet because I like when the colors bleed together. So I never, it's very rare that I take a hair dryer or something to my painting. Um, if an area in the painting's too wet, I'll just move into a different section. But yeah. I'm going to go back with the dark value, get some of these little areas, these nooks in here. So, put a little highlight here from CN1 and here. Yeah, I find sometimes like if you paint with the opposite color underneath, it really just holds holds the painting up. It's kind of a fun approach to try. Um, so just to put the color relativity thing into play, I am going to now take my blue and paint back here. And we'll see if maybe that helps to make the oranges look more orange if I make all of this blue. It should, if, it, if I do it right. Um, this is pretty dry. <clears throat> Clean out my brush real good, real well. Um, take some white and some Blue. I don't want it to be too dark, so I'm going to use a little more white. I mean, this is what's so fun about acrylics. <laughs> you can just do this so easily. It's not this easy with oils. But yeah, so now you see how those oranges are starting to pop out a little bit more because that background color shifted. So I always try to tell that to people when they're struggling <laughs> to get a color Sometimes it's the color around it that needs to change. Um, and just for fun, maybe I'll make this be on like an orange table. So, so that blue bowl will pop out a little bit more. I'll wipe some of this off. I'm running out of paper napkins in my studio. All right, got a t-shirt. So I'm just gonna wipe off some of this. Then I'm going 
go in with my orange for fun and pretend this is on an orange table. so that that blue bowl pops out a little more. This is probably the fastest <laughs> still life I've ever painted. That's it. So if you've done this, I would love to see what you do. I mean, obviously I could keep going in. The oranges do look a little green. Um, so I could keep applying um, some orange paint on top of that and really get it even punchier. But I just wanted you to play around with this idea of working first with the complementary color of something and then painting the actual color on top of it. And that might be something that we play around with a little bit more in the future.